So in today's video, I'm taking the wireframes that I made last time and adding some animations to them. I'm adding several behaviors and transitions to make a really nice experience as you tap through the different screens. In this video, I go pretty fast. I kind of want to show my overall process, but if you're confused about things like how to make transitions or behaviors or what connected layers are, all these different things, search through our uh, YouTube channel. We've got video tutorials on all those things. And this video kind of gives you a whirlwind overview of my process. And I do almost all the screens here, but I'm gonna finish the last couple tomorrow in my next video. And I'll probably give it a bit of a visual update in that video as well, so that I have a very polished end result. So let's get right in and make a transition that goes from the start timer button to the timer screen. So here I am in the transition designer and I'm using the default slide up transition and I'm just starting to customize it. And you can see all this stuff through the background of the timer screen because the background is transparent. But that's okay because I'm just fading out the start screen so that it doesn't look so bad. So now the transition at least looks acceptable, but I want to make it a little bit more fancy. So I'm dragging the start or sorry, the end screen up on top of the start screen and I'm going to drag that name panel down resize the play button and fade it out and then fade out the timer as well. So now all the individual elements are kind of animating in and that looks pretty cool. And here I realized I wanted to fade out the entire screen, but you can't do that in aligned screens mode. So I just unchecked aligned screens, selected the screen and then faded the whole thing out. So now everything fades out um, in the background and the new stuff kind of pops in with a nice animated effect. So this looks kind of cool. And this is sort of a modal change. You know, the default thing that I used was the slide up transition. So this is kind of a tweaked version of that. And the slide up transition is usually used for modal views, meaning you've gone into a whole new kind of section of your app. It's not part of the navigation structure. Now I've, um, I've updated some of the visuals on the timer screen. I just decided that I should move some of those things down. So I went back into my transition, edited it, and made sure that the animation still looks good when it's animating to those new positions. So here I am in the preview, just testing it out, and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So time to move on to the next thing. I'm making a behavior around the start timer button. This is this big important button. And what I've done is put a group around the button and then put a group around that and added the behavior to it. And this is a simple button press behavior. We've got some tutorials on this, but basically you add a new state, shrink down the button a little bit, and then use a touch down gesture to get to the shrunken state. And on the shrunken state, you use a touch up gesture to get back to the initial state. If you also add a mouse out gesture to go back to the initial state, it'll account for the situation where you touch down and then move your cursor outside of the button. And once again, I wanna make a bouncy button for this play button. So I'm just doing the same thing again. It's potentially possible to reuse the transition, but uh, I can't remember exactly. I had some kind of issue with that. So I just recreated it since it only takes a couple moments to build a bouncy button behavior. Now I'm duplicating that play button. I'm making two copies of it because I'm going to turn these into the resume and stop buttons. And I'm just uh, lining those up. They're going to animate out. I'll do that next. But now I'm going in and just uh, manipulating this um, rectangle, turning it into a triangle so that it looks like a play button. Okay, that one looks good. And for the other one, I'm just going to stretch this out until it's a square. And that looks like a stop button. Now those have the behavior already applied to them because I duplicated the entire uh, group that was the pause button that already had the bouncy button behavior on it. So these already have that as well. And so I'm gonna fade those out and I'm gonna create a group around all three of these buttons, including the two hidden ones. And I'll put a behavior on that. And that's how I'm going to make it so that when I tap the pause button, the other two buttons fly out, those appear and the pause button button fades out. So that'll be yet another behavior surrounding all three buttons. Okay, so in this one, I'll add a new state, fade in the other two buttons, have them uh, push out to the sides a little bit, and then the pause button's gonna shrink and fade out. And then it's just a simple tap gesture to go from the initial state to the new state where the play and stop buttons are. And then from the play and stop button state, the play button will go back to the initial state. And the stop button's not gonna do anything in the behavior, but I'm gonna, I am gonna set up a link for that later. So this works pretty nicely. I think it will look better though if they shrink down. So I shrunk those down and I'm going back in the behavior designer 
and that kind of uh, messed up the spacing of my layers. So I'm just fixing that in the uh, final state, sizing them back up to full size. And now there's a little bit more dramatic shrinking and growing effect, which looks pretty cool. So the next thing I wanna do is change the color of the play and stop buttons. I wanna use red and green for those. And so I'm just gonna fade those back in temporarily so that I can see them and adjust the colors. I'm gonna sample the color of the timer button for this play button, and then I'll fade them back out. And now my behavior works nicely with the colors. Next thing to do here is to select the stop button and you can't actually see it because it's faded out, but I selected it um, by just clicking where I knew it was. You could also select it in the layer list. And then I made a link from that stop button to the, uh, the next screen. And I'm gonna make a custom transition here. The first thing I tried to do was connect this panel, this name panel in both the screens, um, but that caused it to get distorted because it's two different sizes and it's just kind of doing a crossfade and scale on it. So I realized that's not gonna work. So I decided to just take the panel in the end screen, push it down so it exactly is right on top of the panel in the start screen, and then just hide the one in the start screen so you only ever see the one in the end screen. So now that slides up. And I also need to account for this timer. So in the transition, I'm going to connect the timer text between the two screens. I changed the fonts, the font weight on one of the screens, so I went in and um, made those the same. They're in two different positions, so using the connected layer feature is gonna allow that to animate really easily. Just connect those and it animates up and down. I also added a link to go back if you click up in the top area of the screen. So if you made a mistake, you can go back. And then I noticed there was a little glitch with my animation when the panel, the name panel slides back down, the shadow color is different um, from the timer screen to the name screen. So I went in and uh, set those to use the same shadow color on both screens. And then lastly, I wanted to make a link that allows you to tap anywhere in the name panel. It just goes back to the home screen. So I'm not adding in any of the detailed behavior of the name panel. For now, I'm just making it go back to the home screen. And this transition is sort of like the first one that I created where everything's gonna kind of slide down. Well, the name panel will slide down. I had to make sure I accounted for that shade layer and made it expand and slide down. So it fades out, um, but then it also has to expand down so that it doesn't get uh, disconnected from the name panel. And then that transition looks pretty nice like that. And in the start state, I faded out the background of the, start of the um, end screen so that it fades in during the transition. All right, so let's go to the preview and I can test this all out. Now I noticed that the play pause button or the play stop button uh, stays in the play stop state. If I select that behavior and then come down here and check leaving causes reset, that'll make it so that whenever I leave the screen, um, that button gets reset. So whenever I come back to it, it'll always be showing the pause button instead of the play and the stop buttons. So now I'm just testing to make sure everything works and it is working pretty good. All right, so stay tuned for the final video in this series tomorrow, and let me know what you thought about this one. Was it too fast or was it too slow? Was this helpful or not? Uh, your feedback's really valuable to help me improve these videos.